right, this is the first lecture for chapter three, which are ecosystems. Starting off, uh, we'll just kind of mention a little story about, you know, what kind of is in charge of most ecosystems. And in many cases, it is insects. Yes, even here. Uh, we have the most visual impact or effect on what goes around around us. And uh, we do a variety of things to limit the amount of damage or effect that insects have. But it really is kind of their world. Uh, true, very true that we can wage war on them and we spend, we do spend lots of money uh, limiting the impact they have. But based on the amount that they have and their life cycles, uh, insects really do kind of run the world uh, everywhere around. Uh, kind of interesting little picture here. If you see in this little guy's left hand, is the leg of the little insect in his hand on the right. And I'm saying hands probably incorrectly, but okay, anyways. All right, ecology. Uh, ecology, is, I think, is the most interesting branch within the sciences, or one of them, uh, the biosciences. Uh, it's kind of once you get past some of that organ systems, uh, study and you really start to look at organisms and how they interact with each other in the living real world. Um, I just find that very interesting. So again, ecology is you're looking at kind of a both thing. So how organisms interact with each other, their communities, and also the living things around them. We mentioned this a long time ago in chapter one. So pretty interesting stuff. And if you're lucky and you're so inclined, you can take a class in college that is specifically ecology, pretty good. We were mentioning early in regards to the types of organisms that we have out there, and the majority, or about half, don't look at this as in regards to exactly, but you get the general idea, that about half of the organisms that we have out there that we know of are insects. And these are species. So it's like, wow, that, that's a lot. And then you can look at some other things in here, and just relative numbers in here. Again, I don't think this is perfect, but it gives you a pretty good idea of the kind of things that we have out there. Uh, mammals, we are, we're a little bit smaller on the list, so they're just throwing everything into that category. But mammals are, even though we're quite large, uh, our relative numbers, uh, species numbers, are pretty low in comparison to other things. Okay, and we were talking about like kind of who runs the world, and we like to believe we do, and we can, you know, wage war and have an effect on other things in the living world. But really when it comes down to who actually is in control in the long run, it's bacteria, protozoa, single cell little guys, fungi, yeast. Uh, these are like, uh, they're very small. They have very quick life cycles, and you can throw a virus in there as well, as we're kind of seeing uh, something to wage war on us, uh, the coronavirus going on right now for the last year or so. Uh, that is something else that is, again, kind of out there. But all of these things uh, control uh, other life cycles, but they're not all necessarily bad, so I don't want to give that impression. Uh, when you talk about, like, bacteria, what uh, some people will point out is just based on the number of cells in your body, you are more bacteria, not you, than you are you. You have more cells of bacteria in your body than you do of what you might just call you. Uh, but all these things, again, help. Uh, they do a lot of things that make life possible here on Earth. Populations, just to kind of throw a definition thing out there, these are all the individuals of a particular group, species that interact with each other. Uh, life support. So when we're looking at uh, the different layers of the earth, you can see all these on there. I'm not going to mention them, but I will mention just the biosphere portion. So you can take a look and you kind of start divvying this up here. You can see the biosphere is right in that mark area between nothing living, just the physical part of the planet, and then where life happens, going all the way up into the atmosphere. So the biosphere is really composed of the atmosphere, the living things that interact within there, and then we kind of put the soil in there as well. So there's a living component 
of soil, which makes it special. Everything kind of stems from that. Life on Earth, and again, uh, we are going to kind of focus here on some of these different cycles that you have. You have the carbon cycle, phosphorus cycle, nitrogen, water, oxygen. We don't really talk much about the oxygen cycle. You just kind of incorporate it into the others. But we will mention just a little bit the sulfur cycle as well. And just kind of looking at how having those cycles, uh, those things need an energy source to move them around, which is solar. And you need gravity to also kind of pull and push, if you will, uh, things around as well. The ultimate driver of all of these things, whether it's the winds or the uh, water cycles, is because of the solar energy. So this is just kind of giving you an idea of the source, where it goes, and how it affects things a little bit. Biomes. This will be a big chapter we do in, uh, I'm not sure which chapter it is. It might be four. Chapter four that we get in with this. Uh, looking at biomes is these different geographic locations. And we have terrestrial biomes and aquatic biomes. And over here, we're pretty much just looking at some of the terrestrial biomes. We happen to live in a deciduous forest on the bottom far right, which is characterized by trees um, that typically lose their leaves in the fall and come back in the spring. But you have a variety of different biomes in here. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this because we will do it another time. But I will mention that there are uh, several. Uh, I think we'll talk about those a little bit more later. This is another way that we can categorize them. And again, it's based upon the temperature and the annual precipitation. So that does, of course, the temperature is going to fluctuate or it can fluctuate throughout the year. And same with the precipitation. And based upon those two factors is going to determine which biome you're in because uh, different conditions allow for different things to grow. This is a, a fairly incomplete list of a bunch of different biomes. But again, I won't go through all of these, but these are almost all, um, well, I guess it is a little bit of a mix. So they're almost all terrestrial, but there are quite a few uh, aquatic biomes in there as well. Okay, so ecosystems, just in general, just to repeat this, there are two components to it. There's all these different living things that are out there, the biotic components. And then there is the physical environment, the abiotic, non-living parts that they interact with as well. So there's, there are those two parts to it. Those are mostly just definitions of thrown at you. Now, based upon what lives in a particular ecosystem is going to be based on the conditions that are there or allow things to grow. And this is part of the study of climate change. So you have things that for thousands of years, millions of years, have adapted to live in certain conditions, whether it's the amount of precipitation or the temperature, and they are fairly sensitive. And we're seeing these changes take place live right now. And this is just a little example here, just looking at uh, where fish this happens to be. And it's got a temperature range in which it does well and then maybe not so well. And sometimes we can just shift along and everybody kind of goes along with that shift. But usually, um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit in regards to evolution, uh, there happens to be, there will be a change in the population. And there's a couple of different ways that can go. But this is just something we're introducing right now that species are affected by the conditions in which they live. All right, limiting factors. These are things that affect how well a population does in its area. Uh, so think of like food. You know, you, you only have so much food, you're only going to be allowed to grow, if you will, so much. Uh, and these are all something that are limiting. So, for example, if you're trying to grow a plant in your house and it doesn't have access to sunlight, it's not going to grow really well, unless, of course, it's something that really does well, very little light. You get the idea. But if you take a look at this list, you can kind of go through there and say, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All these things will limit how well something can grow. Nutrients is something we'll get into a little bit more detail um, later on. DO is dissolved oxygen. So, for example, some fish do really well 
in waters that have fast-moving cold water. And they don't do well in relatively warm, stagnant water. Solidity of salt. And this is probably a pretty good place to take a break, and we'll jump back in for the second lecture.